What's going on, everybody? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Who Gives a Dram. And on today's episode, we are going to be reviewing High West Distillery's blend of scotch, rye, and bourbon whiskeys. We're doing High West Distillery's Campfire. <music> Welcome to episode 29 of Who Gives a Dram, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate each and every single one of you who listen to the podcast. And if you don't listen to the podcast, uh, that's okay too. Um, You probably should. But if you don't, then that's perfectly fine. Um, Before we get into the episode, I quickly want to uh, give a shout out to my whiskey my my whiskey glass that I use every single week, Snoot Glass, the best glass for uh, tasting and nosing whiskey on the market. It's fantastic. Go to www.snootglass.com and put in the promo code WGAD20 for 20% off your entire order. And also, uh, go check out the Great Vine Media. I mention it every week. Um, my partner's over there, my buddies. Uh, we just revamped the entire website and they did a great job. They did a fantastic job. It looks great. So go check out www.thegreatfindmedia.com. And as always, follow me on Instagram. And blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> um, but what's going on, you guys? Um, I'm excited for this week because it's a um, it's just a rainy, gloomy day today. And those days, those rainy, gloomy days, you just want to like. What is it about a rainy? gloomy day that just makes you want to drink you know like it's outside it's cold today in new england it's like 45 degrees it's rainy it's windy it's cold and it's just like you know i i'm not gonna go outside and hang out i'm not gonna do any typical spring activities so let's just sit inside get drunk you know so that's what I'm, well, that's not what I'm doing today, but I figured it was appropriate time to get the podcast recorded, break out a new whiskey, and review it here on the podcast with each and every one of you. So, um, how was everybody's week? I want to say, um, quickly, I hope everyone had a very happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, you know, we don't get we don't get very, very uh, serious on the podcast here often. But uh, I think it is important to address uh, just the, the the meaning behind Memorial Day and, and what it means to a lot of families out there who have lost loved ones, um, you know, um, who have been in our in our armed forces. So um, this is an important day to me. I've had a lot of family and friends in the military who have served, and uh, the the importance of Memorial Day is I think just it's it really it's it's too bad that a lot of people correlate Memorial Day with just barbecues and and um you know like uh family gatherings and that this and that where and it's it's really about those who have who have just made the ultimate sacrifice to to make this country what it is to make it so I can produce a whiskey podcast and put it on YouTube and Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all these other places and have people actually listen to it is because of these people who have defended our country, defended our uh, First Amendment, defended everything, um, and who have died in the in the course of battle. So, um, you know, it just uh, it's I wanted to quickly say thank you to ev- say thank you to everybody who um, has family who has um, unfortunately passed away you know, um, do to, uh, we're not, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's hard to put into words the, the appreciate, the appreciation that I have, my family has for, for all these men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice. So anyways, uh, don't want to get too serious on the pod, but thank you so much, you guys. Um, th- this is the thank you. We, we should be honoring every day should be Memorial day. And um, I try to I try to remember all the men and women as much as I possibly can. So, um, 
But, you know, Memorial Day is the best time for barbecues, now that I mention it. <laughs> but not this not this year. Not this year in um in uh New England. No, sir. It is uh it's just terrible outside. It's so bad. And guess what, man? I am tired. I am exhausted. I haven't been able to sleep a lick. I went on um Instagram live the other day. And I, I've been trying to go on Wednesday nights because that's when I release a podcast. And when I release it, I want to talk to everyone and see if they, if they listen to it, what they thought, and and this and that. But, um, I was I got up, and I just like when I can't sleep, I work on on the pod on the podcast, and I couldn't fall asleep. So I got up, I lo- I logged on, I was working on the podcast, doing some content, doing some editing, and this and that, and. I was just like, you know, I'm going to hop on live. So I hopped on live. This was Thursday night. And uh, I had a few people listening and tuning in. If you guys listen, you know you know who you are, who have tuned, tuned in, had a, had a nice conversation. And um, I had my buddies over at Bourbon with Friends request to join. So they hopped in. I had a good conversation with them. And then they went on their live, and they requested me to be in their live on their page. So I went in on their live, and all of a sudden – after what was supposed to be like a little ounce pour and, and a little bit of podcast work and going to bed, I was three pours deep and it was 1230 in the morning. <laughs> how does that happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens. It happens because of good conversation and good and good whiskey, but it was the exact opposite of what I was planning on doing that night. But we had a fantastic conversation on our Instagram live. And it was really fun. It really was. I love talking to people in the whiskey community. I love meeting people. I love hearing everyone's story. I love hearing how people got into whiskey because everyone is so different when it comes to it. And everyone has a different experience and, and a different avenue as to how they got into whiskey. And it's just, it's always so interesting to me. And I love hearing it. So um, I, I love having those conversations with people. I'm happy I did it, but did it mess up my entire sleep schedule? Yeah. Am I a little bit pissed off that I can't sleep now? Yeah. My, listen, my bedtime alarm goes off at nine o'clock PM. You understand? Every single night, my phone alarm goes into, uh, do not disturb and I get ready for bed if I'm home. Nine o'clock PM. That's what happens when you turn twenty four, people, okay? You get old, you wanna go to bed, I take Metamucil. <laughs> I take Metamucil three times a week, bro. Hey, if you're not on that Metamucil, I think I said a few weeks back I a few weeks back, I drink three things. Water coffee, whiskey. There are things, other things added into that, that, you know, are sprinkled in like some chocolate milk or maybe like a little bit on a palm or something, but three main things, water, coffee, whiskey. Now you can add Metamucil into that. (laughs) Dude, that, that stuff works wonders. Okay. Metamucil is one of the greatest inventions it goes slice bread, the wheel, Metamucil, okay? Slice bread is first, obviously, because I love peanut butter sandwiches. My Nana makes the best peanut and, peanut butter and fluff sandwiches. Shout out two episodes ago. The wheel, because it gives us uh, stuff that can roll. And Metamucil, because it prevents you from getting the bubble guts. I even put uh, Metamucil in whiskey. Kill, kill, uh, kill two stones with one bird. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. But, uh, you know, we still got whiskey to drink. It's my job to drink whiskey. So we're going to do it. And today's whiskey is, oh, oh, today's whiskey is High West Campfire. I already mentioned it. But there's one other thing I want to mention before we get into actually drinking the whiskey. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to open up this bottle. This is my dad's bottle. Shout out to my dad. 
Um, and I just took it from his house, and now it's mine. Um, get some in the glass here. Little pourri poo up in there. I got. I should do the pour like uh, my buddy. Um, uh, what the hell is his TikTok name? I just pulled him up on uh, TikTok. Ryan, you guys know who I'm talking about. If you watch, if you watch uh, um, TikTok, can I log on to my TikTok? Oh, by the way, if you're not following me on TikTok, follow me on TikTok because uh, I have been posting um, a lot more, and I've been making putting clips on to my. Um, onto my uh, onto my tiktok that one dude ryan that's what i'm thinking of i should pour my whiskey like he does in his tiktoks he just looks at the camera dead stare doesn't even smile looking like a badass and just pours the whiskey in looking at the glass or looking at the camera not the glass it's pretty cool it's one of my favorite tiktok accounts um and i've been talking to him he's gonna come on the podcast soon too so i got a lot of cool people lined up to come on the podcast you guys I just, uh, I do it by myself most of the time because I live by myself and it's just easy to, to pick up and, and record a podcast. But um, before I get into the whiskey, I want to um, address something that kind of pisses me off, it grinds my gears, and you know I think a lot of people will agree with me, um, and I'm not going to make this long. I am part of a few Facebook groups. Um, that will re- remain nameless, and uh, I love just seeing everyone's posts. I don't. I, I post a few times. Uh, I don't post any of my content in there, like my video links or anything, because a I don't think you're supposed to, and b you know, kind of kind of sour taste leaves a sour taste in my mouth if I if I do. I think I did it once or maybe twice. And um, but these Facebook groups are supposed to be about people enjoying whiskey. That's it. You take a picture of your whiskey. You take a picture of your find, you take a picture of your setup, or just a a relaxing setting with some whiskey in your hand, or just ask questions about whiskey, whatever, recommendations, anything like that. That's what these groups are for, but recently, there's just been these total D-bags that have been commenting on the Facebook groups that I'm I'm a part of, and they're just like mocking other people, mocking people for... um, for like posting pictures of whiskey and and uh you know f- posting their finds and you know making fun of people for getting a, a Blanton's or something like that I don't understand the hate behind Blanton's one of the best whiskeys out and it's just like dude if you're just gonna like log on and see someone's picture and the first thing you think of is I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the time to post a negative comment and to just ridicule this guy and then when he responds he or she responds and then you get on the defensive oh bro i'm only joking go put on a vest with a bunch of zippers and take a fucking hike bro i i don't mean to cuss i really don't i'm sorry nana i'm sorry but if you're gonna do that if you're gonna just spew negativity into these Facebook groups and you are going to ridicule or demean someone who's just happy to have a new bottle of bourbon or is asking a question or is making a comment, go jump in the ocean and don't come back up, okay? Put on a vest with a bunch of zippers and take a hike. My cousin Matt knows exactly what I'm talking about. (laughs) It's seriously the worst. And I look at these Facebook groups and it just makes me not want to go on them anymore. And that's not the point of not only these groups, but social media in general. Instagram, on my Instagram, I've had nothing but positive experiences. And I've met some what are just friends that I am, that I'm so glad that I'm able to meet. Um a few of which are going to be on the podcast very soon. And it's been been nothing but spreading positivity and the love of whiskey. Yet you go onto Facebook, which Facebook in itself is just like always either political or 
just people posting stupid stuff, and it's always just negative, 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 negative. There is a lot of positive, but a lot of, but, but there's enough negative to outweigh the positive, and it's just like I'm looking at it, and I'm like, dude, jump in the ocean, don't come back, okay? <sighs> if you're gonna be part of a Facebook group, just, you know, post a picture, leave a comment, you know, I love seeing people's collections, and I love seeing, seeing, um, people, you know, find like a, like a George T. Stag or a, a Blanton's Gold or, uh, I don't know, any one of those cool bottles that are just, you know, hard to find. And it's just like, you know, or when people ask, like, is this worth it? Now, part of me, you know, a lot of people will post pictures and they're just like, is this, is this bottle worth it? And they're asking the people and, you get so many mixed answers, but they, they put a price and then all of a sudden the experts come out. Well, no, that's that's five dollars above MSRP. That is blah 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 blah. Now, I have two opinions about that. One, if you're posting a picture and you're asking, I don't really mind it, but at the same time, you need to figure out for yourself if it's worth it or not, because everyone's palette's different. So, although I doesn't that doesn't get me mad, it's just like Dude, just if you want to buy the bottle, if you have the cash, then buy it. And if you don't like it, it's still whiskey. You're gonna drink it. Two, if you're commenting on that and you're and you're just again demeaning and just being a total dick about it, take a hike. Sorry, I got into a little bit of a a little bit of a a rant right there, but it really does bother me because you go onto these groups and you just want to have a positive experience. You just want to get away for a bit. You want to see what your fellow whiskey lovers are drinking, what they're doing, how they're, you know, you know, you, you want to learn a little bit, see how people have their setup. So maybe you take inspiration. I've taken inspiration from a lot of different people on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I, I've taken inspiration from a lot of different people as to how I set up my podcast room, how I set up my whiskey collection, what I buy, where I buy, how I buy, and a lot of other stuff that I can't think of right now. But that's why you go on. You don't go on to to make fun of people. And now listen, I love a good bullying. (laughs) There is nothing better than getting just the perfect amount of bullying in. But there's a point, all right? I bully people a lot. <laughs> but I do it good. You, you you can't bully someone and just keep on pushing, keep on pushing, keep on poking the bear. Because the bear will swipe back, all right? And a lot of these people don't want to get swiped back. But they just keep on in, in antagonizing and antagonizing and poking. Me, I'll bully you. I'll be a... I, I will... I will be a bully, but as soon I know when to stop. That's a that's a that's a superhero. That's a superpower. For those who have just the right amount of sarcasticness and just being a kind of an asshole, but then can pull back. That's a superpower, bro. Seriously, that's a, that's something that like ninety nine percent of people can't do. Now I'm not saying I don't do I do it well, but I know that I. I do it enough because I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've ever gotten anyone super mad over something I've said. Or if I did, I apologize. So, but anyways, yeah, that's my little rant about Facebook group. I can, I wrote that down in my episode notes. We can check that off. I wrote Facebook groups suck and suck was in capital letters. Memorial Day weekend. Yep. Talked about that. That was the only two notes I had, you guys. That's all the preparation I do. The only preparation I do for the podcast is I write down facts about the whiskey. I write down Breaking Bourbon's tasting notes because uh, we all love Breaking Bourbon on this podcast. As much as I rag on Breaking Bourbon, they're the best bourbon website by far. Just the best. Love them. Do they, does it make me blood red mad when they say something tastes like sweet multigrain bread? Yes. But is is it also amazing at the same time? Yeah, it is. Let's be real. It's amazing. All right. Um, I also wrote down that, and this was not a coincidence, you guys. I swear to God. I in my Memorial Day thing, I said that uh, you know, Memorial Day isn't all about uh, barbecues and fires and outdoor gatherings and this and that. But we are doing 
High West Campfire today. Get that shot for the YouTube thumbnail. A little behind the scenes action right there, you guys. Um, so it is kind of appropriate. You know, Campfire, Memorial Day, kind of synonymous with each other a little bit. Like, you know, if it, was, if it wasn't um, shitty outside, we'd be, I'd be outside tonight um, celebrating. I'd be having, I still might have a cigar tonight, but um, I'd be, uh, I'd be out, you know, doing my thing outside, probably fishing a little bit and hanging out with the family. But regardless, that's okay. We're here. Campfire. Let's get into it. High West Distillery in Park City, Utah. And High West Distillery was the first licensed distillery to open in the state since Prohibition. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and if you are a true Who Gives a Dram fan, you will recognize High West Distillery. Because High West Distillery was the first distillery, was the first bottle that we did here on the podcast. That bottle also won the inaugural inaugural uh, 2020 Who Gives a Dram Dram of the Year, which I want to make into an actual award show. I, I might. If anyone wants to have an award show with me for whiskey and get really drunk while doing it, hit me up. Yeah, but uh, who gi- uh, not who gives a dram? Um, a midwinter night's dram was the first uh, was the first whiskey we did on the podcast, and it won my 2020 best dram of the year award, and um, that was High West. We're circling full circle 29 episodes later, 29 we- well technically 30 weeks later because I missed one week. Uh, 30 weeks later, we're f- circling full full circle back to high west campfire now to me i haven't had campfire in a very long time i st- i had one sip of campfire back in it was like august or september of last year and i remember it because i was just getting into whiskey and i had the day off and i went into i was at my parents house and i went into their cupboard and my dad usually just drinks scotch so i had a bunch of scotches lined up and i did like a small little tasting by myself that was the last time i had campfire now, I had, I had had Campfire before that, and I remember not particularly liking it. Very, what I thought, very smoky, very peaty, basically a scotch, that's it. Now, I can almost guarantee that my thoughts of this are going to change drastically. Um, I have done several whiskeys on the podcast where I, I, um, I went in thinking one thing based on past experiences, and I come out thinking another thing. That's what I love about tasting whiskey on the podcast here. I, it's like the, the lights are literally, the lights are on, you know, I got my stage lights on and, and, um, the pressure's on because you know, you know me, babies, I don't edit the podcast one bit. I record from the iPhone or what, and well, for the YouTube videos i record from the iphone and whatever that picks up it's going in the podcast so uh it's kind of just like a one take show here and it makes me have to be good on the spot and i like that i think that's a good life tip so high west distillery campfire let's go into some of the details here on my nifty notebook um company high west distillery bottled by high west distillery now it is at least this uh, at least campground. It is a blend of um, where it's actually distilled from. There's um, some rye that is distilled in house at High West Distillery, but uh, this, there's two rye mash bills in here and one uh, bourbon mash bill and then one Scotch mash mash bill. One of the two rye mash bills is from is is distilled in house at High West Distillery. The other rye mash bill. And the bourbon mash bill are distilled at MGP, which is Midwest Grain Products in Indiana. Now, essentially what MGP is, and they make a lot of whiskeys. They source, they're essentially a private um, distillery that sources their whiskeys out to companies that pay for it. They're essentially a ghostwriter for whiskeys, except they get the clout as well. Because a lot of people really like the MGP mash bills and what they're producing. Um, 
High West Distillery was one of the first whiskeys to really uh, modernize and almost make it um, uh, universally acceptable, from what I can tell, to to source whiskeys, to blend whiskeys, sourced and non-sourced, mass distribute them, and have success. This is one of the examples. Uh, their their um, double rye. And I believe their their rendezvous rye. Right? I think all their whiskeys actually are sourced. And High West Distillery has a very good namesake. They they produce solid whiskeys. Um, but that's what MGP is. So whenever you hear someone refer to MGP, Midwest Grain Products, um, the rye MGP mash bill in this is ninety five percent rye and five malted five percent malted barley. The High West rye mash bill in this is eighty percent rye, twenty percent malted barley. And the MGP bourbon mash bill in this is 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. And it is undisclosed where the scotch is distilled and what the mash bill is. So a blended whiskey is they take all those whiskeys and they age them together and the end product is campfire. Um, this is 92 proof or 46% alcohol by volume. Um, not very hot, but... Uh, I am excited to see just how hot it is. And the MSRP is around 60 bucks. I've seen it for higher. I've seen it for lower. We're going to say 60 bucks. Um, and another fun fact about um, High West Distillery's Campfire, it has been a, a nationwide bottle for a very long time, but that has stopped as of, from my research, March of 2021. Uh, Campfire is only being uh, distributed in the state of Utah and is only going to, you know, the, the state of Utah and also at the High West Distillery Saloon. Now that is so badass that the High West Distillery has a saloon. I want to visit Utah just to go to High West Distillery Saloon. If anyone from High West Distillery listens to the podcast, I would love to come to, sh- to your saloon and shoot a podcast. Just hit me up and I will be down there yesterday. All right. <laughs> um, there's also no age statement. They say it's a blend of four to eight year old whiskeys on the podcast. So pretty standard stuff here, you guys. Um, that's all I've got. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So again, distillery bottle. High West Distillery has some of the best bottles in the game. I love the taller aspect to it. I love like the stained glass. I don't know if you can see it on the on the video podcast here. Um, all of their artwork is, is hand drawn, which is cool. This is, um, artwork on front label, high West, very own Michael Nicola. And there is a, uh, a very big paragraph on the back that probably would give us a little bit more information about the whiskey. I know I'm not, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to read it. So let's give the old whiskey a bit of a smell. It's been sitting in the snoot glass here. Whoops. Been sitting in the snoot glass here for a little bit. Let's give it a little twirl and see how it smells. Oh man, that isn't. There's no peat on that on that nose. Well, there's very light peat on that nose. I get the faintest of of peat and smoke. Not a lot. I should give a disclaimer. I did wash this out with water, my snoot glass, right before. So there is going to be a tad bit of water in here. That should maybe should, I should make that a disclaimer, but I'm getting like a uh, a buttery a buttery sweetness with this. Lots of um, lots of buttery, almost like and I know Breaking Bourbon said this. Breaking Bourbon knows says soft peaty notes, sweet corn, light caramel, brown sugar, toffee, finer floral and fruity notes. Um, I'm getting that buttery, like, softness to this. Light peat, light smoke. The, there's, it's just a faintest hit. It's, this is a, a such a good nose. Yeah. Um, light peat, light smoke, a, a, like a buttery smoothness. I get, like, almost like a... Huh. This is very perplexing. Because it's it's smoky and sweet, 
it's like salty and sweet almost. Got that little bit of that brininess that comes with uh, what I'm assuming is an Isla Scotch. I could be wrong, but with, with with the peat undertone in this, I would assume they're they're sourcing somewhere in Isla. Again, I could be wrong. That's just me assuming. But overall, there is there's a lot going on to this nose, but it's not very potent. It's a lot of like underlying tones that you have to try to pick out. And I am definitely not experienced enough to pick out every single one of them. Our buddies at Breaking Bourbon do that for us. Um, I get that soft peaty notes. And I also get like that light caramel, light buttery softness. That's kind of what I get. Brown sugar, yeah. This is It's more sweet than, than, than salty, per se. It's good. It smells good. Definitely a, um, a, a more intriguing nose. And definitely not that that peatiness that I remember. But anyways, let's get into it, you guys. We're 30 minutes into the podcast. It's time to take a sip. It's time to review this whiskey. Thank you guys for joining me. 29 episodes. Love all of you. <coughs> Cheers. Shanta. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is good. Good. Now, I am an Isla Scotch guy. Episode 3, we did Ardbegwee Beastie. Uh, if you haven't checked out episode 3, go check it out. It's a great episode. I love it. Our, episode 3, we did we did Ardbegwee Beastie. I've always been Isla Scotch. I'm going to have a few Isla Scotches on the podcast here soon that I have that my old, that, that, uh, my old man. My dad hates when I call him my old man. That my dad has. And uh, we're going to review some scotches coming up because I miss scotch. Been doing a lot of bourbon recently. Um, so I gravitate towards that briny, salty, seaweed, mineral, earthy, smoky, peaty smell or taste. I gravitate towards that. This has the perfect amount of what I love from Isla Scotch and what I love from bourbon. It's not hot at all. It's not tough going down. Doesn't have a very big finish, but you get that like. Oh. It's a bit more peaty on the back, but right on the palate, it's you, you, you get that first like smoky peatiness right off the bat. And then it translates into like very nice, soft, like soft vanilla, soft butter. What else is there? Man, I wish I was better at this. I wish I could tell every single no, uh, nuance of, of the smelling and tasting. But I can get the little thing. I can get the obvious things. It's it's right up front with that smoky peatiness. Nothing overpowering, but it's there up the front. And then it's, it translates into like a nice, nice, soft, pleasant, almost like a bourbon. There's no spice. This, the rye spice in here, I don't know if it's overpowered by the scotch. But it's definitely um, not as potent as I thought it would be with having two separate mash bills of rye in here. Yeah, oak is definitely there as well. Getting that little bit of rye spice as I let it sit in my mouth for a bit. That's what she said. Um... <laughs> um yeah, I'm getting if I had to if I had to guess and I have let's see what Breaking Bourbon says. Well no, let's not see what Breaking Bourbon says. I don't want to see. What I get is uh right off the bat a a uh that that smoky peatiness right off the bat translates into a nice soft buttery vanilla caramel um, not a whole lot of like fruity notes. I get a little tad bit of rye spice, but it's like a, like a candy sweetness, like a, like a, like a, like that vanilla is there, like a vanilla, um, how do I describe it? It's like a vanilla milkshake almost like that type of sweetness. Like it's not overly sweet. It's not like, like, like candy sweet, but it's like wholesome sweet. That's not the great way to, to, to describe it, but 
the best way to taste whiskey is just to say whatever the first thing comes to your head. What comes to my head is like if you made a scotch vanilla milkshake. Does that make sense? If you put some some Isla scotch into a vanilla milkshake and add a little bit of like cinnamon and maybe some baking spices to it, um, that would be this. But that's obviously an exaggeration. It doesn't actually taste like a milkshake. But I get that sweetness to it. Let's see what Breaking Bourbon says. Breaking Bourbon. By the way, Breaking Bourbon, if you want to be on the podcast, send me up. Vanilla, barrel char, lighter notes of orange cream. Orange cream. That's a good one. I like that one. That is present in here. Toffee, mixed nuts. Okay. Salted caramel, black raspberries, smoke and peat. So that vanilla barrel char, yes, that I, that's the, that oakiness. Lighter notes of orange cream. I like that orange cream. Like an orange creamsicle is in here. Like a vanilla orange creamsicle milkshake with a little bit of scotch in it. Isla scotch. There it is. It's the best review I've done. That's like exactly what this is. Exactly what this is. This is good. This is really good. The finish Mellow, smoke, plus peat, cedar, tobacco, light clove, and maple. Yeah, definitely a a tobacco finish on this, that nice, sweet tobacco. This would be a great cigar whiskey. I actually really want to try this with, um, with a cigar. Final rating. I like it, man. I do. I'm a fan of it. I wish it wasn't going. I wish I like did this earlier so I could pick up a few bottles. I think I can still find some bottles. I'm definitely going to be picking up one because I'm stealing this bottle from my dad, but I also want to back up because I do like this a lot. Um, final rating for me, $60 is a bit on the high side for something like this for me. Although it's so unique and there's really nothing like it that the fact that they pull it off and they do it well is really impressive. So I'm going to say High West Campfire, first number that comes into my head, that's fair, 8.7. I think this is really good. Really any, anything above an 8.5 is something like, yeah, you should you should get it. You, you should have a bottle of it. Below 8.5, it's like, yeah, you should probably have a bottle, but you're not missing like if you don't. And, and the nines, it's like, yeah, you got to get this. Um, 8.5. Yeah, I think I think everyone should try this. I think everyone out there should try this High West Campfire. It's really good and it's just so unique and different that it's um you know, it's it, it, there's nothing like it on on in the whiskey game. There could be something from a craft distillery that I just don't know about. But this is great, you guys. High West uh Campfire 8.7. Uh it's very very solid blend of rye bourbon and scotch nothing like it i'm glad i i um reviewed this on the podcast because i forgot how um how good it was and i definitely am getting different notes this time than i did last time which i knew was going to happen so that's going to do it for the podcast today you guys thank you for tuning in to hear me ramble on once again i appreciate each and every single one of you and if you guys want to support the show you can do so by subscribing to my youtube channel who gives a dram by subscribing to my apple podcast and spotify anywhere else you listen to your podcast just make sure you subscribe to who gives a dram it really does help it really does if you like my youtube videos if you comment if you leave me a rating on apple Podcasts, all those little things just help me it takes you two seconds do me a favor you know support the podcast once we hit once we hit 100 subscribers on youtube i'm dropping my merch store i'm creating merch every single day some some lucky people have already gotten the merch you like the sweatshirt here you like this sweatshirt, you guys? This is coming out along with some other cool ones. I'm making a lot of stuff. And it's going to be available. And it can be sh- it can get shipped right to your house very quickly. But I'm not dropping it until we hit 100 subscribers. I don't care if it takes a year. I am not dropping my merch store until I hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. So spread the word, you guys. If you want the podcast, if you like the podcast, if you want to support the show, subscribe. That's the best thing you can do. Um, 
regardless, thank you guys so much for the support, guys. It means the world. I've got some really cool things lined up for the podcast here coming up. Uh, I'm not... I am on this podcast grind, you guys. I freaking love doing this. It's my passion. I love making this podcast. I'm so happy Who Gives a Dream is a thing. And I'm so happy I have people who are fans who respond well to the content. So, Nick Bossy, play me out, brother. Pretty new diamond. I'll catch you guys later. Up in New England, that girl sure loved me. We got together and brought things to life. I did buy her a pretty new diamond And ask that sweet woman if she'd be my wife It was a kind of feeling Love songs are made of With that sweet woman Spend the rest of my life She came along I was hurting But at the end of my tunnel I saw no my heart and I can't keep going. Guess I'll just sit here and get drunk tonight. Vows they meant nothing and she ran to a stranger and with Johnny Walker I'm passing my time. I asked the Lord, what should I do? But I'm too drunk to hear him tonight. So sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing, I'm so lonesome I could cry. Back that pretty new diamond that broke my heart a second time. But I got the last laugh when I pawned off her ring, cause it bought me a dime bag and a case of course line. I asked the Lord, oh, what should I do? But I'm too drunk to hear him tonight. So sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing, I'm so lonesome I could cry. So sit with my bottle while Hank Sr. singing, I'm so lonesome. Ah, cool.